DCA family, I miss you so much, and uh, I'm still excited to be able to share God's word with you today in chapel. Um, I wish that I could be in the in the gym, but man, there is a lot of stuff in there, like boxes everywhere. Um, but we are here in the gym lobby, and the power cat is here. It looks beautiful. Um, but hey, I wanted to share some some testimony with you and, and some scripture and just kind of dive into God's word and see what God says about how we can respond in time of quarantine and how we can have abundant life as we, as we have been talking about this entire year. You know what I love? Roller coasters. Now, I can't experience roller coasters right now, obviously, because they're closed, but I love roller coasters. I would give a lot of things in order to go ride a roller coaster tomorrow, but I can't. Uh, one of my favorite roller coasters is the Rock and Roller Coaster in Disney World uh, in Orlando. I love that roller coaster so much. A couple others, uh, the Intimidator, that one's sweet. It has a sweet name. It's in Charlotte, North Carolina at Carowinds. And uh, also like the Thunderbird at Holiday World, a lot of fun. But I didn't always love roller coasters. I actually used to hate them a lot. And I didn't find out I hate, that I hated roller coasters until I was on one. And that was at a state fair when I was probably six or seven. Now you're probably asking, wait, don't you have to be a certain height to be on roller coasters? Yes, absolutely. I'm talking about a kid roller coaster that went like this, like barely any kind of movement, and it just did a circle, right? I remember looking at the roller coaster and be like, man, that looks like a lot of fun. And it looks scary, but how cool would I be if I was able to conquer that, right? Which I did. I, I got on it, and uh, we were riding. We were going up the hill, which was probably two feet. And I was a little nervous, a little bit weary, um, but I was excited. I was like, this is going to be sweet. After this is over, I'm going to be able to get off and say, man, I just killed that. I rock." Well, we go down and I start freaking out. I start screaming as loud as I can for the operator who was a, uh, I remember it was a, like a 20 year old girl. Uh, I was screaming for her to turn it off. I was like, get me off of this roller coaster because I'm pretty sure I'm about to die, like for real. And people on the other side of the park probably thought the same thing for sure. Um, eventually it did end. Not sure if it was because I was asking for her to stop the ride or because it just became to an end, but it did come to an end. This time uh, in quarantine kind of feels like I'm on that roller coaster again. Uh, I'm not as scared, I don't think, uh, but I think that the emotional roller coaster and the desire for it to end is very similar. Uh, I remember thinking like, if this would just end, everything would be back to normal. I could put my feet on the ground and I would be safe. And that's kind of what I'm thinking these days, right? I, I just want this to end so that we can all go back to our normal lives uh, and continue you know, building God's kingdom through DCA and what we do. Now, the important thing is, is that you realize that things probably are never gonna be the same way that it was before tornado and virus, right? Things are just gonna be different. And, and we just need to be willing to accept that and be willing to uh, press on and, and to fulfill God's purpose through that. And be, because he's got great things planned for us and I'm so excited for the future of DCA and for the future of every one of you because I know that God's got great things planned for every one of you. Now, I realize that there are a lot of things uh, that can get you, uh, I guess, life hacks that can get you by in this quarantine. So this is a little bit more lighthearted, but I wanted to share with you a few things that are getting me by during this quarantine season. The first thing is a tape measure. Now, you're probably like, are you just doing a lot of projects? Sort of, uh, but really this is uh, to help me practice social distancing. Uh, so all you gotta do is throw it out six feet, right? And then for you middle schoolers, it's got a uh, lock here. If you've never used a tape measure, boom, it's stuck there six feet, right? Now I could just, you know, lengthen it out make sure nobody gets close to me. Or I could take this end, right? Let's say somebody's coughing. You have to make an emergency run to the grocery store and uh, you hook it to your belt and you got this and if somebody coughs, just throw it at them. And if it hits them, well, you just be like, you were six feet away from me, get away from me, right? And if you miss, you're like, hey, I'm just checking, just checking, make sure you're good. How's Susan? We doing well. All right. 
So this is, this is a really good one. Check that one out. Uh, next on my list, working hands, uh, because I wash my hands about 600 times a day. And uh, yeah, for extremely dry, cracked hands, O'Keefe's. They did not give me money to say that, I promise. But it is amazing. I love it. Uh, then I've got here some toilet paper. I'm not sure why. It's just everybody went crazy over it. And so, well, there you go. Uh, cool. Hey, another thing right here is this. This is so cool. Everybody look at this. Look at this. Boom. Uh, this is representing my child, Brooks. And I tell you, uh, I know that none of you have a... I know none of you have a one-year-old, but I do. Uh, and if you can get a one-year-old to hang out with during this time, I highly recommend it because it is so fun and such, such a great way to pass the time. And uh, anyway, uh, Brooks has been kind of my source of laughter and energy during this time. So really awesome. Maybe watch my kid. Uh, next on my list is a rake. Have you noticed like through when you going, you're going down your neighborhood, right? And you're looking around, everybody's yard looks immaculate, right? That's because everybody's bored, bored to death. And so, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Doing a ton of yard work. Uh, then of course, things that I love to do is read. Uh, yeah, usually I like to read fun stuff. Uh, but this is kind of what I'm reading right now, Systematic Theology and God the Son Incarnate, because I'm in school. So I don't get to read any fun things right now, but it is what it is. Thrillers. Finally, uh, the last thing is uh, God's Word. This is, man, this is what is keeping me grounded during this time. And I highly recommend that you spend some time in God's Word every single day, uh, because this is what gives you the strength you need to be able to make it through the day. Now, it's very important that you understand that God's word is constant and it is encouraging and it, most of all, it is true. And that is all uh, very important, but it is constant because it comes from a constant God, right? Uh, it is true because it comes from the one true God. It comes, it's encouraging because it comes from the author who is encouraging. And so when you're in this time of isolation, it's so important that you are developing a relationship with God. You're spending time with God through his word. And so, man, that, that is my prayer for you and for all, uh, all of our faculty and staff and really just people around the world that we spend time in God's word. Now, I want to encourage you with some scripture from God's word. From Isaiah 40, verse 28, it says this. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Man, like this is so powerful and there's so much packed into this verse to guide us through this time. I remember thinking after reading this of, of a time in my life when I, I was questioning God and I was asking God, like, why are you allowing me to go through this? Uh, when I was two, my father died, and, uh, and then my mom remarried uh, about two or three years later, and they divorced and remarried and divorced and remarried, and so that was just a roller coaster in and of itself. Um, my brother had, has been to jail a few times, um, and there's just a lot of things that have happened and I've, that memories that I have and all these experiences that are just probably not healthy for a adolescent or a child or a teenager. And I wouldn't wish those upon anybody, but I can tell you is that during those times, I developed stronger Christian character and a stronger relationship with God because of the experiences that I was having. And the same could be said about this time right now, is that we could let this cause uh, anxiety and worry, and uh, we could we could only think to like what we're missing out on, or we can allow God to use this time to develop in us a desire to see His kingdom fulfilled and to ultimately bring His plan and His purposes to completion. And man, I want to give every ounce of my energy every single day to to push forward the kingdom of God. And, and I hope that's your goal too. Um, and I know that's hard in this time, especially in quarantine and isolation. Uh, we're not sure how to do that, 
But man, let's start thinking of creative ways. How do we, how do we uh, help those people, our neighbors who, who might be elderly, who could use uh, a couple of things from the grocery store? Or how do we, uh, those same elderly people, maybe we go do some yard work for them? Or like, what can we do to still show God's love to people? Uh, that is so important for us. And, and one of the great things about this uh, passage is it says, he does not faint or grow weary. I remember thinking as a teenager, uh, I, th I thought, man, God, like, where are you during this time? Like, why are you not taking this away from me? Why don't you provide for me in my life? And, and I, I just thought God was absent. Like, he was, he was not an active God like everybody said he was. But it says here, he, he does not faint and he does not grow weary. The virus and the tornado are not necessarily accidents or something that God has just forgotten about or, or something he's not forgotten about you either. In fact, God is your refuge and your, your ever-present help in time of need. And that is so important for you to remember that God is active and he is personal and he is there for you uh, to call upon. And so I hope you would do that. But I, man, I was so, so worried about that. I was like, why, God, why can't you give me a family that is going to fulfill me with spiritual truth and to encourage me and to give me, uh, I don't know, food, right? I mean, I just really desired that. And so, man, I hope that you appreciate DCA and the community that we've uh, been able to experience the past few days uh, and weeks and months that, man, we've seen an outpouring of love and encouragement uh, that has come our way. And, and uh, ultimately, I think God's going to use this to build his kingdom further. And so while it might seem unfortunate and, and just, just annoying even at this time, man, just the future of what God has got planned is going to be even greater. Now, to you seniors, and I know uh, sixth grade all the way through juniors, you guys are missing out on a lot too. So I don't want to suppress that. But especially to the seniors, I understand that, man, this is, this is some of the worst news that you could have gotten for your senior year that you won't be able to finish. Like you weren't ready to say goodbye yet. I understand that. Um, and I can kind of sympathize with you a little bit. Uh, when I was in college at Welch, they sold their school, right? They, they were going to go and build a brand new school out in Gallatin, Tennessee. And, and so they sold half the school and they went down to five buildings uh, for their campus, which was weird because you had a lot of just odd things happening. Like for instance, the teachers and administrators, their offices were in the first floor of the girls' dorm. Ooh. And then the cafeteria was below that. Uh, my office for work in enrollment was up in a classroom, uh, in, the, in the classroom building. P like a lot of events we would typically have got canceled because we didn't have space to do them. Uh, and it was just a frustrating time. We didn't have all the same things and people were, were bored and they were just, they're just disappointed, right? Uh, and I'm sure you're feeling that as well. And I just want to encourage you with the theme verse that we had for that year and really where I want to center here. It's from Philippians 3, uh, and it has this theme of onward, moving onward. And I think that's something for us uh, that would be healthy uh, in, our, in our walk with Christ and in our, our, our daily walk. Uh, it says this in verse 13, brothers, I do not consider that I've made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And that is beautiful. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. You know, we can't control this situation. When I was at Welch, we couldn't control that situation. But what we could control was what we were going to focus on, right? And what, what we were going to expend all of our energy doing. And, and ultimately, here it says that we need to expend all of our energy towards the prize that we have, and that is the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, that Christ has given us redemption through his sacrifice, just like we celebrated a week, of, a week ago, and, and we now have the opportunity to be reconciled to God again one day. Um, and not only that, just like Welch was preparing a better place, God is preparing a better place for you, and DCA is preparing a better place for you. So that God's plan of redemption can be fulfilled uh, through you. And, and that's what we're excited about. And that, I hope that's what you're excited about too. And seniors, I know that looks different for you. Um, but let me just tell you that 
my best memories in life uh, have been in college and beyond. Um, I loved high school so much. It was so incredible. And I know this doesn't really help, but uh, man, you have so many memories that are coming to you in the future. And so, man, let's focus on right now the memories that you can make with your friends and the future and, and all of the incredible memories you're gonna be making. So how do we have abundant life in quarantine? Well, we press on. We, we press on and we focus on what lies ahead. The work has already been done by Christ who has given you life, who has given you redemption. And, and sometimes uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, sometimes we might not enjoy it that much, but at all times, God is glorified. At all times, God is glorified. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Man, if you don't mind, I would love to just pray for you really quick, uh, and then uh, we'll close out. Father, we thank you so much um, for your love and for creating us and uh, the, the help that you give us in times of need. Uh, we know this is a time of need. Um, and we just, we ask that you give us a desire to not just call upon you in times of need, but also in times uh, where it seems like everything's put together. God, during this time, we just ask that you uh, bless all of these students as they are uh, trying to navigate the waters of confusion um, and of misfortune with the school. Um, and we just ask that you continue to bring your uh, truth to us and you continue to bless this school and, and these students that we might be able to fulfill your plan of redemption that you've purposed for us and that we would be about your business in that plan. And, and we love you so much. We're so thankful for who you are uh, in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, man, I love you guys so much and I'm so thankful for you. Um, and I just want you to know that I miss you. I'm praying for you every single day and I believe in you. And so let's keep pressing on, okay? Hey, remember, DCA strong.